Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. This afternoon, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Olympic fencing. And what I mean by a brief introduction, it really would be no different than <clears throat> if you were introduced to a complete stranger and walked away really just knowing his name and perhaps if you came across that individual at a later point, you'd have enough familiarity to at least remember their name and maybe where you met them before. Equipment issues. In my icebreaker speech that I gave several months ago, I mentioned that my younger daughter, Maria, has been fencing since the third grade. She's now a sophomore in high school, thoroughly enjoys the sport, and has expressed a great deal of gratitude to me and my wife for involving her, and she hopes that when she gets to the college level, she'll be able to participate again in a, in a competitive environment. In the United States, USA is the guiding organization for fencing. They've really done a great job with the sport, like tennis, swimming, and golf. It's really a lifelong sport, and the organization provides competitive venues for all ages. We have youth groups, 14 on down, to about eight, because beyond that they have difficulty uh, managing the weapons. And they even they have open events that go up to the age, what we call veterans, which are for 70 and older. Uh, and anything in between, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, various age groups. Uh, they have significant, serious competitors, principally for those people who are in high school and college and a little bit beyond, international competitions up to and including the Olympics. So there's a wide variety of opportunities for anyone who wants to participate in the sport. We even have wheelchair fencing. Uh, it's a worldwide event. The club that my daughter belongs to, the coach is a wheelchair fencer. He was in London this past summer and he participated in the Paralympics in wheelchair fencing. As a matter of fact, we require all the new fencers in our club to participate in wheelchair fencing uh, as part of their development. So it's, it's a nice way to give them some empathy for those who are confined to the wheelchair. But today what I'd like to speak about principally are the weapons that are used in fencing, Olympic fencing, and how you might score a point or the target areas on your opponent. There are three basic weapons in Olympic fencing. The FA, A, the Sabre, B, and the foil, which is C. They all fight very different. There are some common characteristics, but you'll notice the difference, the principal difference when you look at them visually is in the bell guard, which is this device here that separates the blade from the handle. Another significant difference between the FA and the foil, which I'll talk to you a little bit about later, and the sabre, uh, the foil and the FA essentially are thrusting weapons. So to score points, you have to essentially stab your opponent. The saber, which is number B, is a, can be a thrusting weapon. You can stab your opponent. But also it's a slashing weapon. So it's kind of like the weapon that was used by the cavalry. And so they would come in and slash people. So you can score points by connecting with your opponent in the target area by stabbing them or just touching them anywhere in the target area with any piece of the blade. So here's kind of a, an overview of what the weapons look like. Uh, the foil and the, and the epe are, as I said, are thrusting weapons. The saber can be a thrusting but also a slashing weapon. Uh, this is the, the heaviest of the weapons and the sturdiest of the weapon because of the nature to slash down. The foil is the lightest weapon at the top and used uh, for what uh, very similar to what was used in the old days when people dueled. So here's a, another significant difference in addition to the bell guards, uh, and this is the, the tips. This is a tip very similar to what you would find on both an epe and a foil, the thrusting weapons. This is the tip you find on the saber. So to score a point using an epe and a foil, you have to attack your, your opponent, hit them in the target area with enough force to cause this little compression tip at the top to make contact with the barrel. And then that essentially closes an electrical circuit and you can score a point. And that's weighted, so you have to do it with a particular amount of force, and the force that they calculated is what it would take to break the skin 
uh, of a human when actually dueling. So everything is done electrically today, and so what happens is you take this barrel, you screw it to the tip of your FA or foil blade, connect it to this cord, and run it down this very narrow groove, actually from the tip down into the handle of the blade. And then all the weapons will have a socket at the end where that cord and these and the FA connects to, and then all the fencers have body cords, which is another electrical cord that goes through their wrist underneath their jacket and comes out their back and it's connected to a cord that's hooked up to the scoring machine. So here's uh, the overview. You see the, the cord will come essentially connect to the weapon inside the fencer and then this cord which can be run either in very different ways under the, the strip, it can go outside the strip, some clubs even have them hanging in the ceiling, connects to the scoring device. So when you touch the target area of your opponent, because he has a cable also that runs around, then essentially you've connected and you've scored. Uh, and this is a very grainy picture, but you can see the cables coming out of the two fencers as they attack one another. Uh, again, we looked at the, the saber tip, and it too connects through a, through a connection there. So, Question is, what's the target area? Now, where do you have to hit on your opponent? For the foil, oops, too fast. For the double too fast. <laughs> For the foil, you have to hit the silver area, which essentially is from the waist, from the groin, in the front, up to the neck, to the armpits, and in the back, from the waist on up. For the saberist, it's the entire torso, waist on up, out to the wrists including the helmet. And for the FAS, it's absolutely everything. You touch the toe, you touch the helmet, you're going to score a point. So what you have then is you have three weapons, an FA, a saber, and a foil. The FA and the foil, you score by touching the, your opponent's target area, by compressing the tip, and with the saber, all you have to do is just touch them anywhere in the target area, and you can score a point. Mr. Toastmaster.